This morning in Berlin, uh, where our parent entity resides, that is Transparency International, the results of the Corruption Perception Index were unfolded, together with uh, releases and comments. A key comment made by our, our chair of Transparency International is that corruption and lack of trust in institutions speaks to the need for greater political integrity. So whether it, political integrity is factual or philosophical, it does have strong underpinnings that requires tenets of good governance, and among them being public procurement legislation, and as we shall hear as well, campaign finance legislation. As you all should know by now, those of you who are friends, members of transparency or media personnel, Corruption is defined as the abuse of entrusted power for personal gain. It is the accepted definition of corruption as defined by Transparency International and accepted worldwide. In this iteration of the CPI, 180 countries were ranked. And as you will understand based on the analysis, more than two thirds of the countries score well below 50 the average score being 43. So we have well-performing countries, consistently well-performing countries, as well as consistently bad-performing countries on the index. I challenge myself and yourself as I do when I present these results over the last couple of years. Why does that state of affairs continue? The analysis shows as well that countries that perform better on the CPI have campaign finance legislation and not on the shelf. It's implemented and enforced. The scores, as you will understand, when you look at it, those who score over 70 have those basic tenets of good governance, the campaign finance legislation, public procurement systems, and as I move to another point, freedom of information access to information, not just a Freedom of Information Act. One of the big messages coming out of this year's analysis of the results is that greater transparency of campaign financing is associated with lower levels of corruption. And even though this is a corruption perception index, we will find that this analysis is well-founded if we looked at look at the, the fact of the existence of campaign finance legislation and the non-existence of it in the countries that were surveyed. To the CPI itself, you will understand as we see in Trinidad, the batsman that scores the highest is ranked the lowest, in a sense. So the highest scoring batsman, he's number one in the world. At one point it was Brian Lara. These days I'm not too sure who it is, right? So you score the highest amount, you are number one rank. There's always this uh, dilemma in thought when you first uh, come upon the CPI, what is the rank and what is the score? Let me take you now to a short video for you to understand the methodology of the CPI. The Corruption Perceptions Index, also known as the CPI, scores and ranks countries around the world based on how corrupt their public sector is perceived to be. The scores reflect the views of experts or surveys of business people, not the general public. We calculate the CPI using data from 13 different external sources. Transparency International is not involved in the production of any of these 13 datasets. The CPI includes data produced by the World Bank and the World Economic Forum, as well as by private risk and consulting companies and think tanks. Each of the 13 sources rates countries using its own scale. One source rates countries on a scale of 1 to 7, for instance, while another uses a scale of 1 to 100. As a result, direct comparison of country scores between different sources is not possible. 
Therefore, we transform each score from the original scale into standardized values that show the position of each country relative to others. By doing this, we are able to compare country scores across the 13 different data sources. After standardizing all scores, we then convert them into a scale from 0 to 100, which we use for the CPI. Next, we simply calculate the average of the transformed scores for each country. The average score is the CPI value for each country. In order to ensure reliability of the results, only countries with data from at least three sources are included in the CPI. The CPI results are comparable across time back to 2012. This is because when we convert the original data to the CPI scale, we take into account the 2012 parameters, which turns 2012 into the baseline year. Annual CPI results from before 2012 cannot be compared to other years. The 13 different data sources used to calculate the CPI all measure various aspects of corruption in the public sector. This ranges from bribery, the diversion of public funds and the effective prosecution of corruption cases, to adequate legal frameworks, access to information and legal protections for whistleblowers, journalists and investigators. The CPI does not measure activities such as tax fraud, money laundering, financial secrecy or illicit flows of money. Corruption generally involves illegal activities which are deliberately hidden and only come to light through scandals, investigations or prosecutions. Researchers, civil society and governments have made advances in measuring corruption in specific sectors. However, to date there is no index which directly measures real levels of corruption in all its manifestations. The data sources that make up the CPI ask business executives and country experts questions which are based on carefully designed questionnaires. The CPI scores generally correlate with certain objective measures, including citizens' reported experience with bribery. To ensure that the CPI methodology and results are reliable, the index is regularly reviewed by independent evaluators. Such reviews have consistently shown that the CPI is statistically and conceptually coherent. Ultimately, the CPI is the most widely used corruption measurement indicator due to the wide global coverage, the increased reliability which comes with combining different sources, and the fact that it reconciles different points of view on what constitutes public sector corruption. For more information, please visit www.transparency.org slash CPI. As we proceed, uh, and as mentioned in the video, there are 13 uh, video, there are 13 data sources. And for Trinidad and Tobago, these are the data sources. The World Economic Forum, the World Justice Project, the Economist Intelligence Unit, the Global Inside Country Risk Ratings, Political Risk Services, Varieties of Democracy Project, and the Boot Elsman Foundation Transformation Index. Let's turn now to the actual results. At the top of the rankings are once again Denmark and New Zealand. Finland, Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland, Norway. The Nordic countries have once again done well. Consistently at the top, and for reasons we are yet to fully examine and implement in our country. It is not to see that they are corruption free. Let me hasten to add, they have all had their challenges, challenges, they've all had their challenges, particularly last year or two with individual issues of corruption. I was present at a forum um, internationally where the a minister of Denmark stood before the forum and apologize for an incidence of corruption in this country. A forum of 2,300 people or thereabouts. It's held so highly in their country, these aberrations. 
the results at the bottom. And no surprise there as well. Those who are at the bottom are at the bottom again. Sudan, Somalia, Yemen, Syria, South Sudan. So if there's one thing, there's consistency with what is at the top, what is at the bottom. At a glance, in our region, which we call the Americas, and as you can see from the scores there, at a glance, you can see that the Americas have not done well. We have hit the average score, which is 43. And if we took, take a deeper dive into it, particularly for Trinidad and Tobago, we are under the average score at 41. Sorry, 40. Our, uh, our scores this year differ from last year by one point. And for the statisticians in the audience, like Martin and others, they will say it is statistically insignificant. The point, though, that has to be made is that we are at a place where we have not moved from. When we should be going upwards, it, there seems to be a downward trend. This is what the data sets indicate. On the other hand, you will note that Guyana has done well to move up from where they were, scoring uh, 37 in 2018 to 40 in 2019. Canada and the US, are, of course, are the top of the rankings for the Americas. And in, for the Caribbean, the Bahamas and Barbados continue to do well. We can agonize over the results, but this is what it is at this point in time. So we can see clearly that Trinidad and Tobago has not moved from where we were last year. One point up or down to me does not make a difference, but we have stayed at a level in the score and in the rankings of the CPI that we were at for 2018. Again, this issue of big money in, in, in politics, in the governance of our country. And we want to suggest that immediate action on the campaign finance legislation and as Mr. Riley pointed out, immediate implement implementation of the public procurement legislation is required if we are to move from that place where we are to a place where we want to be. We will continue to stagnate if we do not take action. Disclosure of information, public consultations, of course, and this uh, area that some of you may have heard of, the OGP, Open Government Partnership. We need to get back into that forum. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the results. And if it is one thing that uh, the results are showing clearly is that we need to address the current, the corrupting rule of big money in our politics. Thank you.